to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ husbands love your wives as christ also loved the church and gave himself for her ephesians chapter 5 verse number 25 welcome to our study of the godly home today's lesson deals with the role and responsibility of the husband who makes the godly home what God desires for it to be. If the home is going to be what God wants it to be, the husband has the awesome responsibility in leading each individual in that home in the spiritual direction they ought to go. If you'd like to have a copy of this series of lessons that we're putting together on the home, please let us know. We'd be glad to send you a free copy of that. You can visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com, where you can request a free copy of this DVD or any of our DVDs that we have available. We'd be glad to send that to you. Or you can download and listen to those online. And as always, we encourage you to visit the Church of Christ in your area where you'll find people who love the Lord, His church, and His Word and have a concern for souls as well. The lesson today is being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ overseen by the elders of the Central Church of Christ in McMinnville, Tennessee. We'd love to hear back from you about our program or any of our lessons that you've listened to. Please write to us or email us from our website and let us know that you've been listening to our broadcast. Today's lesson will deal specifically with the subject of husbands. What does God say concerning the home as it relates to the husband? And what can the husband do to be the godly leader God has designed him to be? You see, my friend, the husband is to be the spiritual leader. He's to be the head of the home. He's the one that God has placed at the helm to direct the home with such a serious responsibility. What characteristics and what mindset should he have as leader of the home? First, we must realize that the husband must take up the responsibility of being the head of the home. I want you to notice what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse number 23. The scripture says, For the husband is head of the wife, as Christ also is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 3, the husband is head of the wife. He's head of the home. He's head of the wife. 1 Timothy 3, verse 5, he is to rule his own house well. Uh, 1 Peter 3, verse 7, he's to dwell with his wife with understanding. As head of the home, as head of the wife, as ruler of the home, what is his responsibility? Well, as head of the home, he ought to set the direction, both spiritually and physically, for the home. The head is the one who puts things in order. He takes direction and places that into a, a, a practical setting as it relates to spiritual growth. He has the responsibility to set guidelines, to set things in order that will make it a place where everybody can grow spiritually as head of the wife. That doesn't mean that he's a dictator. Doesn't make him a boss in that sense of it. Doesn't mean that it's a, a hierarchy where he is to boss everybody around and tell them. What, that's not the idea. As head of the home, he's to be head of the home just as Christ is head of the church. What does it mean that Christ is head of the church? You know, from that idea, we can understand so much more about the home. Well, Christ as head of the church 
gave Himself for the church. Christ, as head of the church, He indeed sets the guidelines and He indeed puts things in their proper place for the church, but it doesn't mean that He's going to force or, or make or cause someone to do something necessarily against their will. It means that He loves the church supremely. He loves the church because she's His bride and He wants her interest to be first. It, he loves the church in the sense that He wants to protect, He wants to direct and guide that church in every way, and the church, Christians, must be willing to do that of their own free will. And so as we think about the husband as the head of the home, he has a very serious responsibility. Husbands, listen carefully. Sometimes the home is not led in the direction it ought to go because husbands are too weak, cowardly, and spineless to stand up and say and do what they ought to do. And, and many times the wife has to end up being put in a position she's not designed to be put in. Husbands need to have the backbone to set some direction to set things as it relates to the church, to, to place things in order as it relates to the family and the home, to set times for Bible study, to make opportunities for spiritual growth, to make sure that, that values and morals and, and dress and things of that nature, the things we listen to, the things we watch, who's going to make those decisions? Well, God ultimately does. But husbands have the responsibility as head of the home, to put those principles into practice, to make them applicable and relevant to each person's life, and yes, to put discipline in place when those guidelines are not followed by those in the home as well. As we think about a godly husband, not only is he the head of the home, the Scripture says he is to love his wife. Notice again Ephesians chapter 5. I want you to look at verse 25, and then I want you to notice verses 28 and 29. The Scripture again says, Husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is head of the church. He's the Savior of the body. Verse number 25, along with verse 23 says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for her. Now notice verse 28 and 29. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. What do we know about the husband as a godly leader, the head of the home? He's to be a man who loves his wife, who isn't afraid to show and to express that love to his wife. The husband is to love his wife. How? Just as Christ loved the church. How do we know Christ loved the church? Look at what he did. He left heaven. He came to this earth. He gave himself. He purchased the church with his own body. Husbands ought to love their wives in that same way that the things they do, their words, their actions, the sacrifices they make ought to express their love for their wives and no doubt for their children as well. The idea of a husband being someone who's strong and, and someone who stands solid, that's all good and well. But a husband also ought to be seen as a caring, loving, sacrificial individual. A man who can't express his love both by his words and his actions is not feeling, fulfilling the role that God set for the man in the home. Should he be able to tell his wife he loves her? Absolutely. Should his action show by his caring, by his work ethic, by his actions at home, the way he speaks to his wife and his children, by his desire to put the kingdom first and help others in the home do that, should they be able to see that that man is a loving, caring individual? Absolutely. And that's the kind of home where spiritual growth, responsibility, 
and people who love God. Those are the kind of actions that foster those types of people. When we think about a loving, godly husband, the Scripture also says that he is to be a man who understands his wife and strives every day to know her more. I want you to think about the words of Paul or the words of Peter in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 7. Listen to these words. The Scripture says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, Husbands, likewise dwell with the wife as with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. What are husbands to strive to do? To understand their wife. Giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, striving to understand her. There's no doubt that we're each made by God a little differently. We're each made to have different roles and responsibilities, each made to maybe even react in certain situations differently. But here's the husband's responsibility. He's to strive to understand his wife. She's built a little different. She's made a little more uniquely. Her thoughts and ideas and the way she responds may not be quite the way I would respond or another husband would respond. What are we to do in those situations? I'm to strive to understand her. You know, that implies several things. It implies that it takes a little work on my part. Uh, if I'm going to understand her, we've got to get to know each other. We've got to communicate. If I'm going to understand her, I can't just assume things. I can't assume this is what she's thinking. I can't assume this is how she would like this situation to be. It, 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 it under, to, to understand this correctly, I have to realize that as a child of God, I've got to think about her. I've got to put myself in her shoes as it relates to making decisions, whether big or small. I've got to ask myself, how would my wife like for me to think about this? How would this decision make her feel? Can I understand the way she's thinking? You know, sometimes when fights occur in the home, we don't take the time to really do what 1 Peter 3, 7 is saying. We don't ask ourselves, how will my husband or how will my wife feel in this situation? What are they thinking are the factors that are really important in situations like these? And so as part of the responsibility of the husband, Instead of jumping to conclusions, instead of getting angry and saying, well, you should have known, no. I'm going to take the time to think about it, to understand, to put myself in the other person's shoes for a moment, and then strive to think about how that will affect all in the home. And you know, there's nothing wrong with, before decisions are made, asking the person, how do you feel about this? How does this situation affect you? What are you thinking related to these scenarios that affect the home? And then in so doing, we can definitely understand one another even better. You know, as we think about the godly husband, a part of his responsibility as well is to honor his wife. Again, 1 Peter 3, verse 7, the husband is to give honor to the wife. He is to, in essence, place her on a pedestal, if you would, to realize just how important and how valuable she is. If we really appreciate our mates, whether they be husband or wife, we're going to do what it takes to honor them. By our actions, we want to show them we appreciate you. We want to, with our speech, let them know how much they're loved, how much they're hard work in the home, and just how much they mean to us as individuals. You know, if I have something that is really worthy of honor, whether that be, it could be anything. Maybe you've got some kind of valuable. Maybe you've got some type of treasure. Maybe you have some type of antique that you really value. Well, you're going to keep that clean. You're going to keep that 
well organized. You're going to place it where it can be seen. You're going to do what it takes to show that it really is a valuable asset in your life. Friend, how much more, husbands and wives, if we really honor one another, let's honor one another with our speech. Let's not speak in a way that will show disrespect, that just treats one another as a common thing. Let's honor one another with our actions, whether it be the small things, whether it be the, the day-to-day things that we do that help the home. Let's realize the husband and the wife truly are, especially husbands, it's our responsibility to show honor indeed to the wife. Then as we think about the godly husband, let's realize this. The husband is to be the spiritual and physical provider for the family, especially in the physical sense. He's got the responsibility to provide for all who are in the home. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, If a man won't provide for his own, the Bible says he's denied the faith. He's worse than an infidel. Genesis 3, verses 17 through 19, God said to Adam, you'll provide by the sweat of your brow. He would have to go out and work now for his family. Christians are not to be lazy. 2 Thessalonians 3, verses 10 through 12, teaches that laziness is even something worthy of disfellowship inside the Lord's church and the Lord's kingdom. What's the husband, part of the husband's responsibility He's to be a provider. It's his job to get up, to go to work, uh, to make a living, to provide for that family, to make sure that there is a roof over their head, that food is provided for the family, that everyone has clothes and the necessities of life. Yes, we understand that if we seek first the kingdom of God, God's going to provide food, shelter, and clothing, but God provides that by teaching us to work and to make a living for ourselves and to provide for the family. You know, again, it's so sad that sometimes you see husbands who truly are lazy. There's nothing wrong with inside the home if a wife can be the queen of that home, put the home first and take care of the family and the children. There would be nothing wrong. According to Proverbs 31, just as the virtuous wife worked outside the home, there'd be nothing wrong with a wife doing that today. But it ultimately falls to the husband to be the provider in that home. Husbands, don't be lazy. Don't put it off on your wives. Don't expect them to do that. You be the provider in that home. Then as part of the responsibility of a godly husband, that man has the responsibility to also be a protector inside that home. Ephesians 5 Verse number 25, husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. If we're to love our wives as Christ loved the church and, and Christ protected the church, he provided for the church, he built the church, and he set guidelines to ensure its protection today, how husbands just as well ought to do those things which are going to protect their family. Now, let's deal with that in a couple of areas. He ought to do what's necessary to protect his family spiritually. As it relates to morals and values and guidelines, things that might come into the home that would cause them to be vulnerable, the, the husband needs to be thinking about what can we do to protect ourselves from that. What can be done to protect this family from Satan? His forces entering into the home, whether it be through radio or TV or the movies that we see, whether it be through dress or whether it be through immoral actions, what can he do to protect the family morally and spiritually, making sure that each person in the family has opportunities. I understand we can't make anybody, but making sure that opportunities are made available. Every time the doors are open in Bible study and worship, the husband ought to be the leader, making sure that they're there to protect the family as well. And then, to protect the family physically, to make sure that the environment is safe, where everyone can feel safe, 
where it's a good environment that will foster growth and spirituality and, and where people can just grow closer together. That's the type of role and responsibility each husband has in the home and within the family. Then let's realize this, as the, the spiritual leader in the home, the husband, the father, has the responsibility to be the spiritual leader, to nurture and admonish everyone in the home, children, himself, his wife, to grow spiritually. I want you to listen to the words of Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verses 1 through 4. The Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Sometimes maybe a, a, a different wording of that might help us kind of get the idea of what's being said. For example, I like the way J.B. Phillips' paraphrase says this, and I understand it's a paraphrase, but he says this, Fathers, don't overcorrect your children or make it difficult for them to obey the command. Rather, bring them up with Christian teaching in Christian discipline. Does he get the idea of discipline? No doubt. But you know, sometimes you can overdo that. Sometimes we can be so harsh that we can't see the joy of really obeying and following God and following Christian principles. The father has the responsibility to bring up his children in the nurture. That's the idea of, of care, love, affection, and the admonition. Yes, that's the idea of correction, reproof, and discipline. Both go hand in hand. Love and discipline have to go hand in hand, and it's the father's responsibility to make sure that every person in the family is led in a direction that will indeed help them to get to heaven and ultimately know God better. As a good husband and a good spiritual leader, the husband is also to be a leader by his example. Do you remember Matthew chapter 5, verse number 16? Jesus taught every Christian, Let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. A, a Christian is to be an example in every way. And surely the Father, as head of the home, and a spiritual leader ought to be an example. Now, let's make that practical. If we're going to teach, if we're going to nurture and admonish people to talk like a Christian, then fathers, it isn't right for us to talk in a way that's not Christian. If we're going to encourage people to, to have our minds on godly things and talk in a godly way, we need to make sure that our minds and our speech is in a godly way. If we're going to teach that we ought to go to Bible study and worship, that we ought to act as a Christian, that we ought to be involved in good Christian works, and if we're going to teach that the kingdom and evangelism are important in our life and they're a priority, then as fathers, we need to be there every time the doors are open. We need to be seen as doing the good works a Christian ought to do. And we need to be seen as an example of evangelism in our home and in our family. Fathers also ought to be seen for their spiritual leadership in prayer. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, that men are to be the leaders in prayer. They're to lead in prayer always. They ought to strive to be the type of leader that God wants them to be. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, we ought to pray without ceasing. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man, the scripture says it overcomes much and fathers have the responsibility to stand up and to step up 
and to be leaders in prayer. Not only just to lead the prayer, but to teach their family about prayer. To teach the, the husband or teach the children and the wife what God says about prayer and how to pray. If we don't teach our children how to pray, do we just somehow expect that to learn, them to learn that? Yes, they can see for our example, but more than that, we ought to point them to the Word of God. And then as leader of the home, a final way in which the husband ought to be seen as the spiritual leader is relating to Bible study. We believe in Bible study as it relates to having a Bible class, maybe on Sunday night or Wednesday night. But do we really believe in Bible study in the home? Deuteronomy chapter 6, about verses 1 through 6, the Bible ought to be in every facet of our life, even in the home. If we're to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, that ought to apply to the home. We ought to search the Scriptures daily inside God's home and God's family. Fathers have to be the one to take the initiative to initiate those Bible studies, to encourage everyone in the family to read their Bible, to study their Bible, to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the home. And so, as the spiritual leader, every husband is encouraged. Step up and be the type of man God wants you to be. Don't be a coward. Don't be someone who's afraid to lead. Don't be spineless and think, well, I'll just leave that for the wife or the children to decide. That's your responsibility. God put you in that position. That's why you are the head of the home. Your family, your wife, and your children are needing you to do that. God commands you to do that. Take up that role with grace, with love, and with caring. And every day, live in such a way that your home is protected and provided for. As part of God's family, what an awesome responsibility it is to live as a Christian in the home every day. Husbands, let's be the leaders and the examples God wants us to be so that ultimately we can have the joy of knowing our family is prepared for the other side with God. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email this us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.